Hey guys, it's Iran, and in today's video we're going to talk about the dreaded system design interview. If you're not familiar with system design interviews, what they are is an increasingly common type of technical interview where you'll be asked to architect an end-to-end -end software system. Usually that's going to be an extremely large-scale system, one that needs to support huge numbers of users, requests and volumes of data. If you're interviewing for big tech, especially for senior positions, then you're likely to have at least one system design interview. I recently had this type of interview with Google and with Facebook, and usually this is the interview that determines your level. Big tech companies have seniority levels or grades that are meant to reflect your level of expertise. This will obviously affect your compensation and the amount of responsibilities you'll be expected to handle. So the system design interview is the one that really helps the company classify you into one of those levels. The idea is that the more senior you are, the more you will be aware of all the pieces of the puzzle and how they fit together and work together. So the better you do in this interview, the higher the level you're going to be offered. And just like with real software systems, the system design interview question will not have a single correct answer. That makes it extremely different from the coding interview. There is no one optimal solution that you need to come up with, but rather a series of decisions that you have to be able to rationalize. These interviews are designed to assess your ability to gather requirements and make decisions under conditions of uncertainty. You will not be given all the information up front. The way it works is your interviewer will ask a deliberately vague question like how would you design Instagram? And after you have a tiny heart attack, it is your job to collect the information you need by asking clarifying questions like which features do we want to focus on? How many users do we want to support? And so on. And after you're done with your questions and you feel that you understand the requirements well enough, you need to design the architecture. What are the different components of your system and how do they interact with each other? Your ability to communicate your decision making process and explain complex technical information will also be judged here. You need to treat this thing as if you are an architect explaining your design to your team. In my opinion, this is the most challenging type of interview. The fact that there is no one correct answer makes it pretty difficult to prepare for because it makes evaluating the correctness of your ideas a lot less straightforward. In the beginning, it might seem overwhelming. The amount of possible options and decisions you can make might seem infinite, but you will find that the same principles apply to many large scale systems. This is how it was for me at least. I am by no means a system design expert. I spent most of my career focusing more on algorithms and performance optimization. So when I started with this, I did feel a bit overwhelmed, but it ended up not being as difficult as I originally thought. As I said, a lot of these designs share a lot of the same concepts. So it is possible to learn this stuff and be ready within a month or so. Of course, you're not going to become the world's number one architect within a month, but you can do really well in a system design interview. So it all starts with a few basic concepts. The first step in preparing for a system design interview should be getting to know those basics. Now I'm going to mention a bunch of technical terms. Don't worry if you don't understand all of it. You can use this list as a guide for what to learn and what to focus on later. So you should definitely know what availability and consistency mean in the context of system design. What does it mean to have a highly available system? What is a weak, eventual and strong consistency? You should know what polling is versus streaming. When would you use one over the other? What are the trade-offs for using each of these? I mentioned earlier that your decision-making process is a really significant part of what is being assessed here. You need to be able to rationalize every decision that you make. This is one of these decisions. You need to show that you didn't make a decision by flipping a coin or something. You've considered the pros and cons for each option and decided based on that. Another important topic is messaging patterns like message queuing and pub sub. Messaging is a critical part of any architecture. It defines the way that the different services communicate with each other. This is also where I'd mention asynchronism. You should know how asynchronous workflows work and what the benefits are. Another topic that will undoubtedly come up during your interview is load balancing. Every large scale system will need some load balancers. You need to decide in which layers you're going to place them and which distribution strategies you're going to use. And as usual, you need to be able to explain your decision. Why did you choose this strategy and not the other? What were the trade-offs that you were willing to make? Another must learn topic is caching. You will need to have some form of caching somewhere in your system probably in multiple places. You need to think which layers will benefit from a cache. Will you place it on your clients? Will you place it on your servers? Is it going to be in memory on all of your servers? Or maybe you prefer using a dedicated caching service like Redis. What is the eviction policy for each cache? Will you benefit from a CDN? What kind of information are you going to store on it? These are all questions that you should ask yourself during your interview and also explain out loud to your interviewer. You should also learn what consistent hashing is and when it is used. And of course, the huge topic of databases. This is actually a giant complex topic. No one expects you to be an expert in this if you don't have it in your background, but you should know a few of the basics, like SQL versus NoSQL. What is the difference between them? Again, think of the trade-offs. You should also learn about charting, replication, and indexing. You should know what each of these mean and when to use them. 
Okay, so after you get comfortable enough with these concepts, you're ready to move on to the next step, which is to look up the designs of some common interview questions like design Facebook's newsfeed, design Google Drive, design Google Search, design WhatsApp, design Amazon, and design Netflix. I would say these are the most interesting designs that will teach you a variety of different strategies and different solutions to common bottlenecks. So I highly recommend looking those up. If you just do a Google search, you will find a bunch of articles and sometimes videos on these. And at the end of this video, I will mention a few of my favorite resources that I used when I prepared. So that takes us to the final step, which is to do a lot of mock interviews. I actually did most of them by myself, playing both the interviewer and the interviewee. And you might feel a bit weird interviewing yourself, but it's actually really helpful. It helps you get used to the idea of presenting an architecture that you just now came up with. This is a skill that you most likely never needed at any point of your career, right? Usually you would have time to think, to research, maybe consult with some teammates, and only then present a fairly mature idea. Here you have to design the architecture as you're presenting it, and that's different. So that's why mock interviews are so important, even if it's just you interviewing you. I also asked friends to interview me, and that was very helpful as well, obviously for the same reasons, but also a friend can give you some feedback and you can use that to improve. And by the way, Facebook offers this really cool option of scheduling a mock interview with one of their engineers. So I also did that. After the interview, they tell you what you did well and where you need to improve, which is really nice. And of course, this interview and the feedback from it will not affect your candidacy, meaning it will not go into any hiring decisions. This is strictly a mock interview that is designed to help you get ready. Now, I wanna give you another general tip for your interview. Your interview is going to be around 45 minutes long. You will not have the time nor the desire, I'm sure, to deep dive on every single component of your system. So you need to try to steer the conversation to topics that you're really good at, to topics that you know really well. This is where your individual experience and knowledge come to play. Are you really good with databases? Then talk more about databases. Give more detail, be more specific. Or maybe you come from a security background, so say more about that. And of course, this should come after you've already explained the end-to-end -end flow of your system. It's always best to give a high-level overview of the full picture and only then optimize and drill down to the specifics. Finally, I wanna give you some of the resources that I liked using when I prepared for my interviews. I highly recommend Gaurav's YouTube channel. I really like his videos. He has videos explaining common concepts and also some design examples. You can tell he has a lot of passion for what he does, which makes it really fun to watch. I also like this guy's channel. He has a lot of good uh, system design examples. I don't think he has videos for basic concepts. Uh, I could be wrong, but anyways, I like his design examples. I also used Grok in the system design interview. This one is not free, but Facebook gives you a free coupon for three months, so I use that. Either way, it's not that expensive. And it has a really good overview of the fundamentals and also uh, common system designs with diagrams and detailed explanations, so I like that. I also used Systems Expert. This is also a paid product. You have to pay for a year's subscription. I can do a full review video on this one if you're interested, because it's not the cheapest thing in the world. You have to pay for the full year, right? Uh, so let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. But long story short, it was helpful. I liked having everything in one place. Like you have the fundamentals here and then you have the design videos that are meant to uh, show mock interviews. For someone that likes video content, it's pretty good. So that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I really appreciate all your likes and comments. So thank you for that. And thank you for watching. I will see you next time.